Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one, opened Linden as a rare. I think uh, decidedly worse than our uncommon here, Sir Alan. Anything else stand out? Fairy Vandal, excellent to drop for the blue-red draw two decks, still fine in other blue decks. Uh, Revenge of Ravens, quite powerful, but it is a card that um, varies a lot based on the type of matchup you're playing. If you're playing against a blue-red draw two deck that uses Improbable Alliance as your win condition, this is uh, very powerful, of course. If you're up against aggressive decks, this is great. Against the more mid rangey green decks, it's not always very good. Against kind of the blue mill control decks, it doesn't do anything. So it is powerful, but also high variance. And then looking at the commons, there's some fine cards here. Cauldron, Rider, Secret Keeper are all reasonable, but I wouldn't take them over the uncommons. So I think I like taking Sir Alan here over Vandal and Revenge, but you could make a, a case for those two as well. So see if we can make a nice wide beatdown deck. Second pick, we have a couple options. Scorching Dragonfire, Efficient Removal, Youthful Knight if we want to stick to white as probably the best white card in the pack, but it's Definitely worse than just taking a dragon fire and keeping our options open, I think. Uh, spinning wheels, serviceable. Sage of the Falls is nice in the blue-red deck. Still fine elsewhere. A bit early to take Forever Young, but that's also a nice one. I think I like dragon fire over Youthful Knights, over uh, Sage of the Falls as well. All right, third pick. We've got a few options. The Ferocity of the Wilds doesn't necessarily shine in red-white, since we usually have lots of human knights. But it is one of those interesting cards that can sometimes be very powerful. I think it's probably at its best in red-green, where you have lots of non-creature or non-human creatures that um, still fit well into a more aggressive deck. Deathless Knight is very strong, but of course doesn't go well with our first two picks. Trapped in the Tower might just be the pick here. Goes well with our Sir Alan, it's decent removal. Uh, other good removal, Reef Soul, but I don't see a reason to take that over Trapped in the Tower when we already have Sir Alan. And then we might wheel out Flank, which is reasonable removal in an aggressive creature deck like this. But I think Trapped in the Tower still gets the nod. It's also an enchantment to enable Flutter Fox to give it flying, which also can be underestimated. So let's take the Trapped. Alright, uh, it's a pretty late Covetous Urge, definitely very powerful, could have had another Reef Soul already. Redcap Melee is pretty decent removal. Sacrificing a land is usually not a big deal in a low curve deck anyway. It's just a bit too tricky to take the Covetous Urge here given our starts, and Melee seems like the pick over Reef Soul given the Dragonfire we already have. But yeah, black seems open, but so does red, so maybe red-black is the place to be. And we should give up on whites, but for now I think I still take the melee. Alright, well maybe spoke too soon. That's a third Reef Soul in a row, that's surprising. There's also seven dwarves, although we haven't seen any seven dwarves in previous packs, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I mean, maybe the seven dwarves still has the highest upside, maybe I should just bite a bullet here, take the Reef Soul and abandon red, since black seems more open or abandon white and move into red-black. Yeah, you don't need a ton of seven dwarfs for them to be worth it. Two mana, two, two as a fail case isn't horrible. So I could be convinced to take it. I think it's probably that versus a reef soul and try and pivot, since that is a lot of late reef souls. So black might just be wide open. Griffin is fine, but we can usually pick up a griffin later and we don't need many of them, given that we already have Sir Alan. Yeah, I guess I'll take the dwarves. Whenever I face the dwarves, we've usually lost, so... And yeah, there's another one. Hey ho, let's go. Otherwise, Ginger Brute would be fine too, Ritual maybe. But, uh... All that glitters could be fine. Uh, Cauldron is reasonable too. Squire as a combo trick slash creature. 
probably not gonna be a great paladin deck as we're not gonna enable adamant often enough. Yeah, the limit even in drafts for seven dwarfs is seven. So normally there's no card limit for cards in drafts, but uh, seven dwarfs is an exception. Um, so for artifacts and enchantments, at the moment we only have trapped in the tower. But this is nice in combination with Ginger Brutes, which we can hopefully pick up later. In terms of removal, I already have Trapped, Melee, and Dragonfire, so Cauldron might not be super necessary. Yeah, let's take the Glitters. That's a pretty late Matt Ratter. It's not going to be amazing in this deck, but maybe we can still find some synergies with it. And, I mean, it's not like I'm passing up on much. Now I can take my griffin if I want to. Seems fine. Maybe we'll play Knight of the Keep if we need a 3-drop. Alright, I mean Ferocity plus Matratter is quite a combo. And these are dwarves, so not humans. Yeah, maybe Ferocity gets there. Don't think we're playing any of these. Maybe blow your house down if we're hyper aggressive as a finisher. Alright, so first pack went okay. We've got some okay removal spells. Two of the seven dwarves, hopefully you can find all seven. And uh, some cards that are still like questionable here, the Mat Rider. We'll need to pick up some Golden Axe, some Thrill of Possibility to make this worth it. But uh, even if we don't play it, it's not the end of the world. So we'll see. First pack here is pretty stacked. Wildborn Preserver is amazing. Sir Conrad is great. And another Mad Ratter. Then there's also, for the more focused red white aggressive deck, Searing Barrage would be excellent. Flutter Fox would be nice. So this is interesting. I mean, I could take a second Mad Ratter and try and focus more on those synergies. Although it doesn't go all that well in my red-white aggro deck at the moment. Could just take Barrage as OK removal, could just take the Fox. Don't think we can take Preserver or Sir Conrad and abandon one of my colors. Although, there's still a chance that if I take Mad Ratter, I abandon White and just move into Blue-Red. The other day we saw how effective Ferocity is in combination with Mad Ratter. So yeah, Blue-Red... Could still be an option here. We give up on Trapped in the Tower. We give up on Sir Allen, but maybe that's still okay. And Matt Ratter is quite powerful, so that might be worth it. And then I could just be a Blue Rat Seven Dwarfs Matt Ratter deck. Don't think I'm gonna wield Barrage, but the pack is pretty powerful, so we might still wield something good, although I don't think it's gonna be in our colors. Yeah, I think I still go for it here. Although, now we open another Sir Allen. They're not making it easy, this draft. There is also Thrill of Possibility to go with our double Mat Ratter. Arden Veil Tactician also great. Shepherd is also great. So lots of good white cards. Nothing really in blue. Yeah, this is kind of the decision point, I think. I can take a white card and move back to red-white. Or I can probably take the Thrill of Possibility and try and make this draw two deck work. I mean, Thrill I could potentially still play in red-white, so let's say we don't open any good blue cards and I see more good white cards, I could still be like a red-white draw two deck, but the draw two is going to be a smaller sub-theme in the deck instead of like the major theme. And then if I pick up some Thrill, some Golden Eggs, I can still make Mad Rider worth it. I mean, Sir Allen is very good, Shepard is good, Tactician is great. Yeah, I think... Just going with another Sir Allen is probably still the pick. And then hopefully we can wheel either Tactician or Shepherd. Not very likely, but maybe the outflank or even the Ratcap would be okay to wheel. Sir Carol's great, although we do have to watch out that we already have a lot of 5 drops here, so I need to start lowering the curve. But yeah, I mean, Sir Carol's amazing, so... Don't mind the Rimrock Knight now. Nice 2-drop for the deck. Plus a built-in combo trick. Haven't seen any dwarves so far, so maybe the 7 dwarves aren't gonna get there, but we'll see. Uh, Heraldic Banner, does it do anything for us? 
Not really. I mean, it's still okay, but we're pretty split between red and white. I mean, Beloved Princess is not amazing, but maybe we just need more cheap creatures for this deck to function. Hangewalker is not going to be very good. I mean, Crystal Slipper is kind of interesting with uh, two Sir Allens, because then having a hasty Sir Allen can definitely catch the opponent off guard. Then we could also make a case for the Drawbridge instead. The Drawbridge is funny because it allows you to block Ginger Brutes if you don't have any haste creatures. I mean, Banner ramping us into a turn Forcer Allen is kind of nice, but what color do we even name? I guess it depends on our hands for the most part. Yeah, I think I just take the Banner anyway. Ooh, nice. Third Seven Dwarves. Fourth Seven Dwarves. What is this? Eighth pick Cara, what's going on? I mean, I guess we'll just play four Sirs as our five drops and drop the Griffin. Barrage wields. Oh boy. I mean, I might just take the Flutter Fox over it. Now that we picked up all these fives. Don't think this is going to be a Ferocity deck, although maybe it is. It is good with the Dwarves. Knight of the Keep, we can hopefully cut. Everything else is reasonable. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance I could go Molnar Red. Although giving up on double Sir Allen is definitely painful. I don't have a ton of great white cards, like Trapped and two Sir Allens, basically. In which case... I mean, Searing Barrage in Monorad is amazing, so... Yeah, I mean, maybe it is worth it still. So yeah, we'll definitely keep our eye out on Monorad as an option. Raging Ratcap is great with the banner, um, and great with Ferocity if we want to go down that path. Thrill could maybe still open up the option of Mat Ratter, but like, one Thrill is not enough for this to be playable. We need, I don't know, like four or five draw effects. And I don't think we're going to get that in one pack, especially if we're going to be red, white, or mono reds. So, yeah, let's take the red cap. And if we're going to go mono reds, Dwarven Minus, excellent. Although I wouldn't mind a Rimrock Knight, even the Weaselback red cap would be playable. Yeah, Burgeon is definitely fine too, but I think uh, given my lack of three drops and the good synergies we have with the Raging Rat Cap, I would still rather take it here. All three of these cards are considerations. So let's assume for a second that we do end up Mono Rats, then this is kind of how our deck looks like. So 18 minus 5, 13. So we do need to pick up quite a few playables in the last pack for that to work out, which is not a guarantee. So I don't think I can afford to take Dwarven Mine, I think we just need actual spells. So normally, like if we already had a lot of playables, I would maybe take the Dwarven Mine, since it's kind of free upgrade in our deck um, over a basic land. So between Rimrock Knight and Weaselback, it's actually close. Weaselback can hit pretty hard, it is a nice mana sink for the late game. But Rimrock, if we're aggressive enough, is usually still better. Alright, Raiders is a nice pickup. And might play the Slipper. Alright, so pretty happy going into the last pack here for a potential mono red deck. Kind of sad that we didn't pick up those Amberth Paladins in the first pack. I remember passing one or two. Those would have been decent, but uh, didn't really expect to end up here. Open a Feasting Troll King, not exactly what I want. How is Lucky Clover for us? We have two Rimrock Knights. And that's it. So, yeah, I don't think Lucky Clover does anything. Can just take a Golden Egg. Can take a Sorcerer's Broom as a random two drop, although it's not like we're lacking two drops with the Dwarves and the Rimrock Knights. Already have a Blow Your House down in the sideboard, never gonna need two of them. There's no white card I want to play here. So yeah, a bit of a blank. 
Is there any chance that Lucky Clover becomes good enough in my deck? I mean, I guess if I take like five or six more adventure cards. Golden Egg gives me maybe like a way to make the Mad Rider work if we get enough of them. But that's also pretty unlikely. Fires of Invention, does that do anything in our deck? I don't think it does. I mean, it's kind of nice with Sir Kara, I guess, because we can use the ability from Sir Kara, spend our mana casting whatever we reveal with it, and then still play something for free with Fires. But as kind of reaching, Trainer could be fine, Weapon Rack could be fine. How many Knights do we have? We've got two Rimrock Knights, we have a Red Cap. And then two Sir Karas, so not too many, but uh, could still be serviceable, especially if we go mono red. There's no amazing cards for white either. Weapon Rack is still an option, it does play well with uh, double strike creatures like Red Cap. Yeah, we might have to do kind of a, a check here, like can mono red still work, or am I gonna need to go red white after all? In which case I'm never gonna play Trainer if I'm playing Sir Allen at five. And then I might want a weapon rack since I don't have any 4 drops. But I'm probably going to wield a weapon rack anyway. So I guess I'll take trainer. Alright, nice dragon fire. Definitely the pick here. Hopefully we can wield the rat cap raiders. And this is between like a bargain or a thrill. Thrill, of course, would go well with our Matt Ratters, and then we would have Golden Egg and uh, Thrill to go with it already. Also gives us a way to discard lands in late game for flooding. And I already have two Rimrock Knights in kind of the pump spell slots, so Bargen doesn't seem super important. Let's take the Thrill. Trebuchet seems reasonable enough, even if I don't have a million Knights just a 1-3 reach that pings the opponent is fine. Uh, Jousting Dummy could be fine as well. Henchwalker, if we're mono red. So I've got a few options. Uh, Trebuchet is a bit of a nombo with like Heraldic Banner, Ferocity, for example. Although not completely useless with Banner, just making this into a 2-3. Um, and I do have a couple knights here, Sir Kara, the trainer, Ratcap, two Rimrock knights, so Trebuchet seems worth it. Love me another Dragonfire. Alright, now I think I gotta take the creature over the pump spell. Chance we wheel, Bargen. Nice. Eighth pick, last pack. The fifth dwarves. Right on time. And nothing here that we want. Just take the uncommon for the vaults. So I think mono red is happening. Got the raiders and the weapon rack. Actually, close decision here. So let's get these white cards out of here. So 24 cards, I even need to make a cut. I guess Golden Egg doesn't seem necessary anymore. Thrill is still probably fine as uh, Flood Insurance. And I think Ferocity is going to be good enough. Most of my two drops are not humans. The only humans in the deck are like Sir Kara and uh, Trainer. So I don't have any 4 drops, but I have a lot of 2 drops, so I can just play 2 2 drops on turn 4, so it's not like I need necessarily to have a weapon rack. I already have Banner and Ferocity as ways to pump my creatures, and a Slipper if I want to include that. So I could see the weapon rack being uh, unnecessary. Red Cap Raiders, I already have 2 of them. It's not a Knight, just a Goblin Warrior. I mean, we do have a lot of creatures, so the weapon rack is never going to be terrible, but we don't have any synergy with it. No Shepherd of the Flock to buy it back, no Flutter Fox to gain flying. So I think I might just take the Raiders anyway. Alright, Bargen might make the cuts. Maybe over the Crystal Slipper, and Dummy is a Knight, so 
possible that it uh, is good enough here. Got the radars anyway. All right, so we definitely have enough cars to make Monorad work. Sadly, it's going to be without Mad Rider since we only have the Egg and the Thrill to synergize with it. Could see Bargen still being good enough. So Jousting Dummy, Slipper, one of the Ratcap Raiders maybe. I think those are the cards we can consider cutting. In terms of removal, we have Triple Dragonfire, Melee and Barrage, so that's good. And then Double Sir Kara as kind of our win condition finisher is going to be very good too, alongside the five of the seven dwarves. So the deck looks promising. Could even be a 16 lander, considering we have Thrill and Banner to kind of smooth out our mana. Don't have a ton of expensive cards. And since we're monocolored, we don't need to worry about drawing the right colors of mana, which also helps with playing fewer lands. In which case I need to make two more cuts. Dummy has a bit of synergy with the trebuchet and with the trainer. It's also non-human for ferocity, for what it's worth, but all our two drops are non-human. And then Slipper, it's nice to give Sir Kara haste if we have a lot of mana, but doesn't seem super necessary. Only have the one double striking creature to really synergize with that. So yeah, let's cut these two. And then 16 lands, a reasonable curve. I can dig it. Let's pick some nice basics. And how do we call this masterpiece? Five out of seven. Seems like a keep to me. Might have to play off curve here, we'll see. Opponent stays back. Alright, now I think I'm gonna go a 3 drop and then turn 4 go double dwarves. And which 3 drop do we want to play? Probably raiders, so I can trade for their raiders. Just a 4-2. Ooh, I think I might wait for Ferocity here to attack. Get in some juicy trample damage. Ooh boy. And I can wait on the melee since my creatures are gonna have trample. So I can wait to see how they block and still trample over. Alright, so just kill the Guardian then. I'm okay giving up on the land. Or I could let this happen, still trample for a ton of damage. And then maybe save the Ratcap melee for next turn if they attempt to double block. Close decision. I think I will go for the melee. All right. On the draw, we can probably keep this. Let's play the dwarves.
Probably still okay playing dwarves here over raiders. Could have used the Rimrock Knight just to get it out there. Might want to save it to go with a rat cap. Or to potentially trade up for a larger creature when displaying green and we don't have much interaction otherwise. Alright, that is with Adamant, sadly. Could just play Dwarves and play Rimrock Knight without using the Adventure first. Could play Rat Cap and then set up my Rimrock for next turn to be pretty effective. I think I might just play this as a 3-1. Good draws here would be Ferocity of the Wilds, presumably. Or Heraldic Banner. I've got a few good 5-drops that uh, still require one extra land. Yeah, that's plus one counter here from the Pathlighters relevant, although there's a banner. So now I'm still good to attack. Do we have any tricks from our opponents? We don't. Alright, it's a big tree folk, although there's Sir Kara. Seems like the play here. Can let us attack past the tree folk next turn or just uh, provide some card advantage. Alright, never mind. No adamants, so no vigilance. Bone's gonna hang back. Scorching dragon fires, not bad. So, I suppose I want to ping my opponent first. And then I can attack, play dwarves, probably dragon fire. And I think we want to let damage happen first. I mean, playing Rat Cap is also reasonable, but let's play the value game. Alright, GG's. The dwarves got it done once again. All right, we're on the draw. Yeah, this seems keepable. Can always discard some of my expensive cards if I need to hit land drops with Thrill. Bit of a more controlling draw this time around. We've got a two drop to play. All right, well, the mirror match. I think I'm just gonna dragon fire the dwarf now. I guess barge in. Is that the only pump spell that pumps toughness? So I could wait until beginning of combat, maybe. Because they might prioritize playing the dwarves over a three drop. I will kill it now before they get a chance to barge in. And a rat cap. There's our own dwarves. So the trebuchet technically blocks a rat cap if they don't have a trick, but of course, a Rimrock Knight or Bargen would 
make that block look pretty bad. So I could play it if they attack. And we can reevaluate and maybe next run keep up Dragonfire. Seems reasonable enough. And if I lose a trebuchet, it's not the end of the world. Could also just trade it for the rat cap, the weaselback rat cap that is. Force them to pump instead of playing something more expensive this turn. Alright. I think I'm uh, blocking. Not a rat cap. And a banner. Would love to play the banner to develop our mana. I think this is probably a turn where I want to keep up Dragonfire. I could main phase a Thrill, I suppose. And look for lands. But what do I discard? All my cards are good. But yeah, technically playing banner means they can't attack me unless they have a trick. Which, if they had a trick, they probably would have used it last turn. So I could just play Banner and hope uh, they don't kill my Trebuchet, otherwise I'm going to take a pretty big beating. Alright, fine. If my opponent has their own Searing Barrage, I could just be dead here. Slaying Fire instead, fair enough. Gonna take five. Still no land. Alright, I guess now we'll play the dwarves and then I'm okay trading for red cap and then we have dragon fire for the other one. Could do it now. I think I'm gonna wait in case I do have a trick. And then I'm probably just gonna thrill discarding trainer end of turn if we don't need to dragon fire, but I'm pretty likely to dragon fire regardless. Their own banner. Oof, that's a good one. Alright, so that means I can't trade for Red Cap anymore. And a Ferocity too. So definitely gonna kill one of them. And then hope to draw a land for the other Red Cap. I'm okay trading dwarves for the Weasel back. But they're gonna wait until they can pump and trample over, which makes sense. So this is 6 damage. That's a lot. But yeah, I'll take it. If that works too, I suppose. Yeah, I could main phase a Thrill just to hit my land drop, although it's not like I need 6 mana next turn, 5 is enough. I guess I could draw a Ratcap melee, but that doesn't... or like Ratcap melee plus a land. And that might let me play 2 spells. I don't know, I, I guess I might as well do it now. Don't need trainer. Another seven dwarves. I guess that's also a reason to maybe main phase it. Although it's gonna still be better to dragon fire instead of play another dwarves. So let them attack. Yep. Seven. Am I dead here? I guess I'm dead if I don't kill the weasel back and then take six. Because yeah, this is going to trample for seven. So yeah, I guess we have to dragon fire there and then hope to draw land next turn. Ah, time to turn the corner. So what do we want to do first? We can go Sercara or we can go Raiders plus 7 Dwarves. 7 Dwarves plus Raiders threatens to close out the game faster, so I think that's the play here. And we've already played uh, Thrill, so I think I'm okay playing my lands. 
Right, if my opponent bricked, they could be dead. But at one, I could die to many things. Rimrock Knight doesn't block. Alright, good game, I guess. Sweet. That was a nail biter. Let's keep it up. Alright, this hand is a bit less exciting. Four lands on the play. Definitely a risk of flooding out here. That being said, it's kind of really mulligan a hand that plays a 2-drop into a 3-drop and has a combo trick in it. Probably not. And just gotta hope to draw Sir Kara. Maybe Thrill of Possibility to discard a land. And more 7 Dwarves, of course. All right, blue reds. Typically a draw to synergy deck. I don't have any knights yet. I can barge in if they try and block with a queen, but then my creature is still going to be tapped on the following turn, which is annoying. If they play Queen of Ice, drawing like a Scorching Dragonfire would be a pretty clean answer. So don't love my chances in this game, we're already out of action and it looks like we might be flooding out a bit. So yeah, best draw here, probably Thrill of Possibility, discarding land and then drawing into more action. I would also take Sir Keras, Searing Barrages, more Seven Dwarves, so we do have some good draws. Merchant discarding Thrill, and there's Sir Kara, alright. I'm okay playing out one land, but I want to keep one land in hand in case we draw Thrill. Alright, hopefully Sir Kara survives. Ooh, Gadwick, that's a good one, draw three. Not our dwarves. Don't really want to trade Sir Kara here, so we'll activate this first. The Rimrock Knights. Seems weird, but I feel like my opponent would trade every time if I played the Seven Dwarfs first, whereas now there was a chance they didn't trade, and we really don't really lose out on anything. Yeah, if we can keep Sir Kara alive, we still have a chance this game, but my opponent did draw a ton of cards here, so... They're pretty likely to have found an answer. Although if that answer is something like, uh, so tiny, then it doesn't really answer Sir Kara. Tomb Raider, I can also decide to shoot down to let my Rimrock Knight attack. Although there's another Rimrock Knight. Alright, decisions, decisions. I can shoot my opponent, hope to draw something good. I can shoot down Tomb Raider, attack with both, and then opponent blocks the seven dwarves, get in for three, use the adventure from Rimrock Knight. That sounds pretty appealing. 
So yeah, let's do that instead. It's also reasonable not to send the dwarves, just a Rimrock Knight. In case we draw more dwarves. Still keep Mountain in hand, in case we draw Thrill of Possibility. And we've got a nice board presence going. Another Tomb Raider feels pretty desperate here. So if I draw removal, they're dead. Otherwise, I guess I can kill Wolverine, attack, hit him for three. What happens if I attack with everyone, then... I guess they're just trading off for Rimrock Knights, and then I get a Sir Kara trigger. Hmm, it's definitely close. Because, like, if I trade off my Rimrock Knights, and they have removal for Sir Kara, then I don't have anything unless I find something of the Sir Kara trigger. Whereas now we would be left with the Rimrock Knights. Yeah, I think I still killed the Wolverine here. Could also pass and not attack, but the three damage is still probably worth it. Still want to play out a lands, because with Sir Kara you never know whether or not you're going to need to play two expensive cards in the same turn. So both of my creatures are lethal. Opponent is still desperately digging. They've seen a lot of cards, but uh, Sir Kara survived so far. Sir Eleonora, yeah. That puts my opponent dead on board. Well, feels like we stole this one. Did not think we were winning with uh, how the game started. But yeah, there you go. So far, so good. On the draw with a keepable hand, for sure. A worthy Knight could be scary. We've got a couple Scorching Dragon Fires that uh, would come in handy. Can potentially trample over the tokens, so that's nice at least. This attack heavily implies a combo trick, so I'll take it. Alright, so now can play the other dwarves and then attack, and I'm trading Dwarves for Tactician. It's not that amazing. So I might be better off playing a Raging Ratcap first. I mean, trading for Tactician is not the end of the world, because we do need to get rid of the Flyer at some point, but Ratcap is a bit more mana efficient. Yeah, I think I'm just playing Ratcap. Could have also considered attacking with the seven dwarves into the tactician, hoping to like represent Bargin, but my opponent's pretty likely to call my bluff, considering that uh, Rimrock Knight would still result in a trade. But yeah, we do need to bait out this combo trick at some point since we're behind on life here, so we're definitely in a pretty tough situation. Don't think we're outracing our opponents, given that we started on the draw here despite the ferocity. Yeah, if I had to guess, it's probably the Squire plus two plus two and untap, which could also ambush my creature if my opponent passes here. What happens if I double block the worthy knights? And what if it's like an outflank? I guess it still trades. Yeah, I guess this is reasonable. 
they get to pick what to trade for and they don't have to use a trick. But if it's plus two plus two, we would still trade. And worthy knight is pretty scary, so. Ooh, do they also have an outflank? Ouch. Well, if they had both, we were gonna be in a tough spot regardless here. I can thrill, hoping to find a Scorching Dragonfire, and if we don't find it, I can still play Dwarves. Don't think Ferocity is going to be very good this game since we're behind. So I think I'm discarding that. A Ratcap melee. Probably better off playing the Dwarves. If they have all lands in hand, there's still a chance, but uh, otherwise I don't foresee us winning this one. Not a Grange's excellence. Yeah, the value of those lands in monocolor decks is very high. Sad that we didn't pick up any Dwarven Mines, had the chance to pick up one, I believe. So maybe it's not so crazy to play Sirkara here and go to one. Of course I'm dead if they have anything, but we're not beating anything anyway. Or I could go Raiders plus melee this turn, but Raiders doesn't really block anything all that well, other than the Worthy Knight. So we'll try this. Alright, they just had it all. Well, not much we can do here. Yeah, the way we have a chance at winning that game is just by killing the Worthy Knight as soon as possible with the Scorching Dragonfire. Because whenever you're playing against a deck with uh, combo tricks, if you just remove the first creature they play, you can kind of slow them down. But if they get to keep attacking with combo tricks in hand, then you're kind of powerless. Alright, this hand's okay. I've got our Dragonfire this time around. The trainer doesn't look amazing, definitely one of our weaker cards in the deck. But, uh, yeah. All the dragon fires. <laughs> Alright. Well, get a repeat of last game. Just gonna kill this right away. Rat cap. Probably still kill it with fire. And since they're playing white, I don't want to let them untap. Playing dwarves technically trades for it. So I could try and set up a situation where we block, they use a combo trick, and I blow them out with a dragon fire. Which could be possible. So maybe I do play dwarves and take my beating for a turn. And then next turn I can go Dwarves plus Dragonfire backup. And there's a chance I need to kill something else. Ouch. Alright, well Joust punishes us for this line. So I think now I'm just gonna block, offer the trade for the Dwarves since we don't have any Dwarves left in hand. And if they have a trick I'll Dragonfire. And otherwise I'm fine with the trade. So I would flank would deal one damage and then first strike would kill my dwarves. Now I got a nice two for one since I would flank doesn't do anything. So we got rewarded there. And yeah, that goes to show the value of instant speed interaction as opposed to sorcery speed. So if I banner, I don't get to do anything else. But it does set up my trainer for next turn, and then I could hit for three. Alternatively, I can play Trebuchet, which blocks Ratcap, and if they pump, they waste their turn. It would be better to play banner in a turn where we can play something else in the same turn. So I think I'm leaning Trebuchet.
And then if I draw land, I could go Banner plus Ferocity, or I could play the Trainer anyway. So this attack is interesting. Probably implies they have a pump spell, since I don't think they would make this attack if their plan was just to pump the rat cap, although, I mean, could still be reasonable, I suppose. I think I'll just take it. They draw the lands, so now what? I think just trainer and then smash with both. So I get to ping my opponent first. Trebuchet technically blocks the Pathlighter as well. But again, I might want to play my uh, banner first. We'll see. Ooh, that's pretty effective. Would have also killed banner, so has multiple targets in her deck. All right. So we can go Banner into Ferocity, hit for a bunch. Or I can make use of a Rimrock Knights. Go Banner, pump with Rimrock, play Rimrock, and then next turn Ferocity, that seems better. I guess now I'll pump the Trainer in case of an outflank. And then next turn Ferocity is hopefully game. So opponent got stuck on three lands this game, couldn't really deploy their entire hand. Got a nice exchange with the Scorching Dragonfire and Outflank. And a Ratcap melee for good measure. Again, since this gives Trample, we can wait to see how they block. And still get in all the points of damage, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. And there we go. So this time we were able to beat the Worthy Knights thanks to some early dragon fires. All right, seems good. Opponent with a nice aggressive start. Probably gonna have to take four here since I want to keep my dwarves. All right. We're not even gonna get the chance to block. Oh wow. All right. Well, let's uh. Very good start from our opponent here. It's going to be difficult to catch back up. Another situation where we would love to have a Dragonfire to answer the Fox. And Bargen not too useful on defense, so definitely suffers in the aggressive matchups where we're on the receiving end. And the fact that they're not even using the Ginger Brute implies they have a Combo trick here of some variety, could be outflank, could be squire, could be something else. Like I could wait and then hope to thrill of possibility into a dragon fire so I can punish a trick like we did in the previous game. But I don't have the dragon fire in hand yet, so it's not even a guarantee. Yeah, I'll make him show me. And there it is. Can't use this on the Dwarf, sadly. Well, now the Rat Cap at least uh, could block the Venerable Knight profitably. 
So hopefully they're out of tricks. But we still need to find an answer for the fox and the brute, which is now going to be unblocked. Take three. Alright, Sir Kara is definitely pretty good here if we get to untap with her. Can deal with the brutes. Still need an answer for the fox, but if we kill the brute and the fox loses flying for the time being. That's fine. Probably takes a thrill of possibility if I had to guess. So here, if we had more life to work with, I could consider killing the Brute right away, but here, if I'm going to kill Brute right away, Kara can block, and I would still take lethal from the other creatures, so I need to block and then ping, potentially, which does mean that if they do have a pump spell, they can save the Brute and kill us, but if they have a pump spell, we're dead anyway, so... All that being said, I'll just play Ferocity, since we lost our thrill, I'm fine playing out lands. Although I could keep this in hand to kind of represent having a trick, which I guess is reasonable too. And I'm going to be busy killing my opponent's creatures instead of playing out lands to potentially play two spells with Sir Kara in case we trigger the ability, so I guess there's no real downside to keeping land in hand this particular turn. Clockwork Servant, yeah, that means the Flutter Fox still flies. So that's bad. So we're not that this turn, but probably gonna die next turn. So Fox hits for two. And then... Probably gonna need to Sir Kara the Brutes anyway instead of one of these two. They can sag this to gain three, doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Raiders, so... Yeah, if I let my opponent on tap, then... The fox just kills me, so I need to go digging with Sir Kara. The thing is, I could still find Dragonfire and cast that in the opponent's turn. So that Sir Kara can potentially still block. I think I'm just supposed to play Raiders, pass a turn, and then see what happens. I guess I could have drawn into a trebuchet. That was maybe a reason to ping first, but then we would only have three blockers and we would still die to an all-out attack anyway. So yeah, let's pass. All right, let's find a Scorching Dragonfire off the top. Ah, oh, not quite. All right, GG's. Close game. All right, five and two. Well, our deck is named five out of seven. Hopefully that doesn't mean we end up with five wins out of seven, but I guess it would be pretty fitting, so I guess I'm happy with either a win or a loss here for the memes. And yeah, the sand seems keepable enough. Well, well, well. What do we have here? So, ooh, nice, another Dwarves. So next turn we can go Dwarves plus maybe Adventure the Rimrock Knights. Flutter Fox. That's fine. I think I'm fine with an Adventure here.
blue-white is not too likely to have this giant blocking creature that we need to get past with the uh, adventure. Trebuchet lines up well against the fox. So I think that's going to be the play over banner or anything else. And then we get to untap the trebuchet if we play Rimrock Knight next turn. If they do attack, they probably have a trick, because otherwise they might want to trade Fox for Dwarves. Although that's still debatable. Alright, that does take away the activated ability as well, sadly. Don't really want to use melee when we're stuck on three lands. Can play banner to kind of unlock the trainer next turn. But I would prefer to have my Rimrock Knight in play before we play trainer anyway. So I would go banner this turn, next turn Rimrock plus a two drop. Or I could play Rimrock now and then hope to draw land and then next turn I can go banner plus maybe thrill. I think I prefer Rimrock now. And then next turn banner also lets the dwarves attack past the Queen of Ice, potentially. Ooh, Emery. Well, Emery plus Witching Well means my opponent has a pretty strong late game. They can play Corridor Monitor for free. Yeah, the two cheap removal spells here, Casket and Trapped in the Tower to kind of keep up with our aggressive start. And now uh, it's not looking too good. Although land now means we can potentially double spell. And if I thrill, it's unclear what I would even discard. But then I also don't want to melee if I want to trainer next turn. So it's kind of a tricky spot. So if I attack, what happens? Opponent probably trades Queen for the Dwarves over Rimrock, although it's still debatable. Yep. Thing that happens, just deal four, and then I could thrill discarding melee. I could keep it in hand to eventually answer Emery or Flutterfox. But Trainer next turn plus Rimrock Knight seems uh, pretty appealing, so I don't want to get rid of it or sacrifice a land. Gets back the monitor. I do want to kill Emery, but I think I gotta wait a turn to get this trainer in play first. Alright, so now I can trainer plus melee and not feel too bad about it. And I could have lethal if my opponent has no interaction, if I just kill the monitor. So I can attack first, block, and since both have trample, see if my opponent does have some sort of interaction, and then decide. Fairy Vandal. Yeah, that counts. So I can see how they block first, and then still melee potentially. Alright, that should be game. So that worked out.
All right, time for the final boss, six and two. We broke the curse of the five out of seven. So all's on the line here for the last game. All right. We're on the draw with uh, an okay hand. One dwarves, one dragonfire we can play early. Third land gives us ratcap. Ratcap plus ferocity is good. Ratcap is a knight to go with a trainer, so gotta keep, I think. Ooh, blue rats with a turn to improbable alliance. Well, ferocity is definitely gonna come in handy in this matchup. Being able to trample over the 1 1 tokens. Think I'm okay with a trade. And then play my own rat cap. Pun takes it. And then next turn I could go Dragonfire, the Rat Cap, plus maybe Adventure, the Rimrock Knights. Or I could go Ferocity plus Adventure, Rimrock. Opponent did keep up three mana, which is a bit uh, suspicious. They could go for a Thrill in my turn to make another token, for example. No double blue, so no counterspell mana. They could have their own Dragonfire. A bunch of different options. I think we'll start with Dragonfire. And that works. And then attack. They could make another fairy and then double block my dwarves, so be it. Nice. So tiny the rat cap. And given that this is already so tiny, I could still adventure the Rimrock Knight on the rat cap, deals the same damage as if I were to do it on the dwarves. And then if they do have another removal spell here, they would kill rat cap that's already got it so tiny on it to fizzle the Rimrock Knight, and it's not as bad as pumping the dwarves. Or I could just play this as a 3-1. But I think I'm okay with the adventure first. So we did miss out on quite a bit of damage, sadly, but... Sir Eleonora, if we can draw land for Barrage, that would be nice. Although I guess we can't even kill Sir Eleonora. As it costs two more. All right, so that's a pretty good start from our opponent. What are we doing? I could trainer pumping rat cap, give it uh, plus two plus two, still would only be one power f double striker, which isn't quite enough to get past Sir Eleonora. Yeah, I mean, I can play Rimrock Knight plus Ferocity and no attacks. And then next turn I can train her pumping the Rimrock. But yeah, opponent's kind of running away with the game here. It's gonna take a while before I can actually barrage Eleonora. And in the meantime we're not really outputting any damage and they get to accumulate more value with the Alliance. Opponents feeling confident, they're attacking. Alright, I think we uh, train her here. Oops, probably should not have attacked with the trainer. Forgot that it's uh, an actual human, so it doesn't get the bonus from Ferocity. Yeah, that's an oopsie. Well, 
Well, we got six damage in, I guess that's something. Gotta get them in range for this uh, Searing Barrage. Alright, so Kara is a way out. So Rimrock Knight can still attack. But we're potentially on a two-turn clock here from our opponents, so it's going to be close. Ouch. Yeah, that's pretty good. Still can barrage Sir Eleonora. Opponent's got more than enough to kill us in the air next turn. I guess if I shoot one flyer and barrage another one. Four, five, six, then they're one short. I can chump Eleonora with the rat cap and that keeps me alive. Yeah, I think that's the play. Kill an actual creature, I suppose. So we're not that on board, but uh, have difficulty seeing how we actually win. So I have to ping a flyer, otherwise we're dead. Guess I'll kill a token in case they can bounce their own raider somehow. We're at one. Three blockers on the ground, so I guess I can ping my opponent and hope for the best. Not sure what I can even draw. Barrage is gone. Couple too many lands in the end. GG's. So yeah, I made a mistake there with the trainer, forgetting that uh, it didn't pick up the bonus from the Ferocity. Could have maybe made a difference, although probably still lose that game, I think. So 6 and 3, still respectable for a deck that uh, we didn't even know we were mono rats until the very end. So still pretty nice uh, run, and we got to live the dream with the 7 dwarves, which is nice. Not quite a full 7, but uh, 5 out of 7 dwarves gets you 6 wins, so hopefully we'll get uh, all 7 at some point. Want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.